Hey everyone, this is AJ Barnard, park naturalist at Potomac Overlook Regional Park. Spring is finally bringing us some warm weather and that means the return of some of our hopping friends, I'm of course referring to frogs. So today we're going to look at the frog pond at Potomac Overlook Regional Park. We're gonna see what kind of amphibians and frogs live in there and we're going to learn about what they're doing this time of year. Follow me. All right, everyone. So we are now at the Potomac Overlook Frog Pond. So this is a man-made pond. This is not a natural one. This is the one that was built many years ago. Um, but this pond houses many different species of amphibians, and this is what we call a permanent water source. Um, the reason I point that out is because right next to the pond, we have something called vernal pools. So down this trail here, we have a couple vernal pools, and these are temporary water sources um, that oftentimes dry up during the drier seasons, um, but are going to be really, really filled when the weather is kind of kind of wet and rainy. So here's two examples of vernal pools down here, but these are temporary water sources that amphibians love to use, um, oftentimes because there's not really any predators in here. So unlike large bodies of water, like ponds, lakes, rivers, where you might have fish, turtles, um, larger uh, carnivores and predators like that, Vernal pools are going to be kind of a sanctuary for amphibians where they can lay their eggs safely without any, any risk of, of, of predation from, from really large animals. So the reason we point that out is because our frog pond, even though it's a permanent water body, there is also very, very few predators inside of this water source. So really the only thing we have in here right now are going to be other frogs, essentially. That's gonna be the main predator of the tadpoles that are living in here right now. So even though this is a pretty small body of water, it is really heavily used by our amphibians. And that's what we're here today to see. We're here to see what kind of amphibians we have in our water source. So we have a couple amphibians that oftentimes make their homes here. Um, really the three species that you would see would be wood frogs, American toads, and green frogs. Um, these species are gonna be active at different times of year. Um, they're also going to breed at different times of year. So we're filming this in mid-May. Really the two species that we have in our pond right now are going to be green frogs and going to be wood frogs. Now, I know it's kind of hard to see from the video, but there are hundreds, if not thousands of tadpoles that are living in this pond right now. So I'll try to give you guys a zoom in too, but really any little thing that you see on the surface of the pond outside of your debris, the sticks, leaves, all those kind of black lines, dots you see, those are all tadpoles. And really the ones that you're seeing right now are going to be wood frog tadpoles. So even though our wood frogs, adult wood frogs are no longer in here, we have plenty of wood frog tadpoles. So most wood frogs are gonna live to be about three years old at the most. Um, they're also going to emerge early spring. So again, we say we're filming in May right now. Um, most of these wood frog adults will have emerged back in March, to, if not early April. Um, so they're well gone by now. They have dispersed off into the surrounding woods around the park. Um, they, even though they are aquatic and can be aquatic, they also do still live on land. So the adults are all gone, but you still see plenty of their tadpoles right now. Um, there's so many because the female wood frog can lay up to 3,000 eggs, 3,000 eggs. So they really make sure that they have a lot of offspring just to ensure that some of them do indeed reach adulthood. Um, the tadpoles you see here, they might take up to a year or two to develop. So some of the tadpoles you're seeing probably are not from this breeding season. Um, these might be from ones that you saw last spring. Um, so those ones that will have already been kind of developing for a year, they might be getting ready to, to emerge. Now, I don't see any here that currently have any legs. We don't have any froglets yet. That might change soon, but some of these tadpoles will be emerging. Some of them are gonna stick around for probably another year or so. Um, the tadpoles, while they're in here, are going to eat things like algae and something called detritus, and that is another word for dead leaf litter. So all these dead leaves and sticks and branches that you see in the pond, as they decompose and as the tadpoles break them down themselves, um, they're gonna be a food source for them. So even though you don't see any wood frog adults, we have plenty of tadpole wood frogs. Um, and of course, that being one of the earliest stages of a frog metamorphosis, which is the process that your egg goes from being an egg to a tadpole, to a froglet, to a frog, that process. Now, we also do have green frogs in here. That is going to be the main species that you see right now in May. 
um, in terms of adult frogs. They're typically gonna be lining along the edge here in these reeds, these ferns, um, gonna be hiding out um, typically underneath some of the dirt and some of the branches in the pond too. Um, but of course, you can't really see me in this video right now. Our frog pond has been heavily visited by people today, so not a lot of frog activity. Most of them are hiding out, but I did actually capture one a little bit earlier, which we can take a look at. So this is an adult green frog. Um, my guess being that she is also a female green frog. Um, the reason why I say that is because one of her size. So this is going to be the largest frog that you find in this pond. Um, they're also the second largest frog in Virginia outside of the bullfrog. That's going to be the biggest one. But these ones are the biggest ones that we have in this pond. Um, so because she is really pushing the size limit for what a green frog can be, and I'll give you kind of an example here. This is my hand, so you can see the size comparison. <laughs> She's a little, little spooch right now, but we'll put her back in just a sec. But you can see the size comparison, how large she is. She is quite big. So because of the size and that the females get larger, we can probably guess that she is female. Um, and also, it might be kind of hard to see here, but she has a kind of circle behind her eye. That's kind of a good shot. You can see there on the left. So that circle behind her eye is what we call a tympanum. That's an eardrum. Now, in the frogs like this species, if the eardrum is about the same size as the eye, they are probably female. If the tympanum is larger than the eye, then they are likely male. Hers looks to be about the same size as the eyes, so I can wager she is probably a female. Now, we also got a good shot here too. That is a green frog tadpole, the large one that you see down there. So I also included some wood frog tadpoles. Those are the smaller ones you see swimming around. Those are the ones you would have seen in the pond earlier, but the big one right here, that is the green frog tadpole. So these ones might also take a year or two to develop. Um, but these frogs are going to get very large. They're going to be the largest tadpole in the pond. Um, the one that you see right there is about the same size as my thumb, if not slightly longer too. So we're talking about a very, very big species of tadpole here. So once it gets cold, these frogs are going to kind of disappear. They do hibernate. They are cold tolerant. Um, the wood frogs especially are actually well known for being able to hibernate in sub-freezing temperatures. They can actually be found as north as Canada and into the Arctic Circle. Um, the green frogs also have some level of cold tolerance too. They're tadpoles you can actually find swimming underneath the ice during the winter, so they are also amazingly cold tolerant species as well. So the green frogs have just emerged and we know the wood frogs have been around for a while already. They will probably be here up until August. You know, their breeding season typically is April to August. Um, but they are probably only going to start breeding once we get some stable temperatures of at least 50 to 60 degrees. Um, at the time of recording, it's about 70, which is why they're active, but we probably will not really start seeing them breeding until we get some nice, steady, warm weather, which I think every one of us is probably looking forward to at this point. All right, so one thing that we do not have in here right now are frog eggs. And that's because like we said, the wood frog tadpoles um, have likely already emerged from their eggs. That's some of the ones that you're seeing right now. And then green frogs probably have not laid their eggs yet. Um, now the eggs that you would see with these frogs would be in this water source too. So amphibian eggs are almost always laid in the water. Um, so even if that amphibian might spend its time on land, just like our adult wood frogs can still live on land and oftentimes do, the eggs are almost always going to be laid in a water body. And like we said, a water body like this, where there's very few predators, is going to be a great spot for eggs. Now the eggs are going to look like this. So here's just a picture of what they might resemble. They really do kind of almost look like eyeballs too. So they'll have this jello mass around the eggs um, and they'll have a black dot in the middle and that is the embryo. That's going to be the baby frog or, or really the baby tadpole that is forming. But you can see egg masses um, in ponds and lakes some of which are gonna be larger than a human too. So just a couple couple weeks ago, if not a month ago, we had an egg mass in here that was probably around four feet wide and six feet long, and was probably made up of over maybe 10 to 100,000 eggs. The females might be able to lay around 3,000 eggs in any breeding season. And during breeding season, we might have as many as 50 female wood frogs around here. So you could have up to 150,000 eggs being laid and in any given breeding season, just in this little body of water right here. It really is incredible. So because we have our green frog breeding season coming up, there's probably a good chance that in 
the next week, two weeks, maybe next month, we'll see some good green frog action in here and we'll probably see some more egg masses. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. We hope you enjoyed getting a glimpse into what our frogs are doing this time of year. And make sure to follow the Nova Parks YouTube channel and Potomac Overlook Regional Park on Facebook for more content. Stay tuned.